Hey, what's going on guys? It's Joe from Gadgetry Tech and today we're going to talk about a Lorex 2K wireless surveillance system. So I've reviewed a 4K system in the past uh, that used Ethernet or power over Ethernet. It's a higher resolution system. It, it's more robust, but it requires a lot of cables and Ethernet throughout your home. So this one's nice because it's 2K, you still get good picture quality, but it's wireless so you don't have to pay an electrician to come run cables or cut holes and do it yourself or any of that stuff. So if you have an older home or a new one that may not have been uh, well suited for ethernet or a coaxial cable, depending on what system you buy, this should be a good option. So we're gonna do an unboxing. I'll show you why I picked some additional accessories with this and how you can complement this to make it work better for your home. And we'll go from there. Now, obviously I'm recording outside today. Uh, it's a nice day out. We're gonna be installing it outside. So why not just kick things off out here anyway? Because of that, there may be animals, cars, people, because obviously it's a nice day out. We have neighbors. So we may hear some noise in the background, uh, but we're just gonna go with it. So let's start with the unboxing. I wanna show you what you get. Now I got the four camera system. The way this house is set up, this is a rental home. I'm, I'm building a house right now, which is going to be um, pre-wired for all the cameras throughout the home later. But this home is not suited for that. I still wanna have the surveillance capability. So I went with a four channel system. Now. The four camera package is 550. That comes with four 2K cameras. For 699, you can get a six camera system, and for 850, you can get an eight camera system. I say that because um, the cameras by themselves are $130 each. So for basically $20 more, you get two. So if you think there's a chance you're gonna upgrade and add two cameras down the road, which you can, because even if you buy the four camera system like this, it's still an eight channel recording device. The NVR is still eight channel, which means eight cameras. So if you think you're gonna add two down the road, try to just buy the six camera system or the eight camera system up front. It's gonna save you a lot of money on the back end that you didn't have to spend allowing you to use that for other things. So anyway, let's start opening up. Let's see what we get inside. So right off the bat, first thing I see is my little quick start guide slash manual. This is probably gonna be pretty complex. Um, let's see, we got registration, regulatory info. Um, I'm gonna save you some time. We'll obviously have a manual, but I'll be explaining some of the basics on how to install and set everything up on this video um, because some people learn better that way than sitting here reading a book. So you get that. Now it's packaged quite nicely inside. You have individual cardboard boxes, which is kind of similar to what I got on my 4K camera system in the past. So let's break the seal of this. This is the recording device. Now what's really cool about Lorex systems and why I'm a big fan of going with something like a Lorex over a Nest or Ring surveillance system is there are no monthly fees. So whatever you record, you own, and if you need to look back at it, you don't have to pay a monthly fee to go back and look at historical events. So I like not having fees. I think that's super important. And then let me crack this guy open. It just gives you more control. So obviously not only do you have the membership thing, but if you're privacy minded and you don't want your data up in the cloud, this is where all of your video footage is stored. It's stored on this box. So you don't have to worry about sending it off to Google or Amazon for their own viewing in case you're worried about compromise or people seeing you know, what's at your house. Now I've worked with Lorex in the past. On my first review, I just basically did a full coverage on the system and then they contact me about an affiliate program because the video was pretty helpful for a lot of people. I'll have a link in the description below for various uh, Lorex products. Um, they change deals often and I will try to update the channel as much as possible. However, if you purchase through that, it does support the channel. You get it directly from Lorex, which is great because you have no issues with warranty or not getting the right model and you can find all the accessories you need to. That helps support the channel. It's not a kickback. That's not why I'm doing this video. You'll learn soon that I'm not here to sell and push you onto this product. I just want to help educate you so you know exactly what to expect for how to use it and set it up. So in the NVR box, you get a mouse. This is common because you can connect this to an external monitor. You have your ethernet cable, um, which will be helpful if you can put it near a router. Then you have your power supply for the NVR and an HDMI cable. So you get all the stuff you need out of the box to use this connected to a dedicated screen if you wanna go that route. Now this does work with mobile. You can use it on Android or iOS. So if you don't wanna deal with looking at a screen all the time to look at historical footage, you don't have to. You can send everything to this box and then log in with your phone to view the content. So let's unwrap this. This is actually really lightweight. 
All right, so I unboxed the NVR, and this thing is a lot smaller and lighter than I expected. I guess they switched to a mobile hard drive, which is a 2.5 inch hard drive, because this thing doesn't weigh anything at all. There's a terabyte built into this, and we'll figure out later what the capacity is, but this is incredibly small. And on the back, it's nice and simple. You have HDMI, LAN to connect to your router. That's so you can view or connect this to your network, your mouse and external storage, which is great. And it even has a micro SD and of course your power supply. Rubber feet on the bottom. This does not look like it's a wall mountable product. So this is designed to just sit and rest. So that is the NVR. I'm gonna put some of these things off to the side because we have a lot to unbox. Package filler only, good to know. More package filler. You know what, let's move that out of the way. Okay, so we have the cameras. This is the power pack. So let's see what's in here. This is probably the batteries um, based off the weight. Now, I don't know exactly what to expect for battery life yet. I will talk about that later because I wanna give you the most accurate information. They're rated for up to six months of battery life in ideal temperatures. If you're recording, I wanna say it was like 24 events a day with 10 second clips. If I'm wrong, I'll update it and put a little graphic on the video. But basically because this is wireless, it's not designed to run 24 seven and record everything. Otherwise these batteries won't last long. They're motion based. And once there is an event or a detection, the camera will turn on and send 10 second or whatever you configure it for clips to your box. So this is the battery pack. What's really cool about these is they have a micro USB port to recharge while it's inserted or if you remove it, which is nice. Um, and that just makes it easy for maintenance. I'll show you later how to set them up and power it. And it comes with a single, okay, so we have more. So I have a AC adapter, USB, standard USB. Let's see if it has any fancy current. It's two amps, so five volt at two amp, which is a 10 watt charger. And then you have a very long micro USB cable, which is cool because that means if you wanted to, technically you can uh, plug it in outside and have it hooked up to your camera and charge while it's going. Okay, so that about covers it. You get another safety and regulatory thing. So we have the battery pack, we have the NVR, all the accessories to connect it to a screen. Let's put the power cords off to the side here. And I'm only gonna unbox one of these, but basically the remaining two are your 2K cameras. There's two per box in this case. Obviously, if you buy a six or an eight camera system, it's gonna be a larger box because you have to fit all of these. So let's open this. I may open this kind of crudely because I'm not trying to waste your time. All right, here we go. So we have the cameras. These are actually really light as well, which is interesting. Um, so these do still have the LED deterrent. These little LEDs up top here can actually illuminate. So if you're concerned with uh, motion deterrence, basically if these detect a person, you can have the LED floodlight turn on to show them that, hey, there's a camera here. You should uh, leave the premise. Um, this is a very simple way of tightening and adjusting. On my old Lorex system, you actually had a, um, a couple screws, which are a little bit challenging to get to. This is a much simpler system. You just rotate this disc and it kind of locks in. Now there's also external antenna support. So there are little antennas in the box, these little guys here, but I know Lorex also makes an external add-on. So if you need a much more robust range, you can unscrew this and mount a longer high gain antenna, which will help if you have your cameras off farther into the yard. Now, there's some really cool tricks you can do for that too, if you're concerned about um, not only range, but not running out of power because it's in a less accessible area. So what I'm gonna do, I just twisted this so I can flatten the camera out. I'm gonna screw the antenna in, and that is a piece of cake. Now I'm good to go, and all I have to do is tighten the ring back down and angle the camera as such. So not too bad. Now the mounting brackets are really simple as well. You have this little plastic plate. There's no metal involved. I don't know if it's just to keep the weight down or durability or whatever it may be. But basically you install this plate however you want on your home, slide the camera down, and that's it, you're good to go. Now there is a tiny little screw hole at the top. So if you don't want the camera to easily pop off the base, once you've slid that down, just put that tiny little screw in, it'll secure it. And then the battery pack is designed to be at the bottom. So let's grab one of those. And all we have to do is insert, and that's it. That's the complete product. It, it, this is not gonna take me that long to install. This is super easy to do. And I do like that there's metal retaining clips on the side instead of plastic, so that should hold up. There's also a tiny little screw, which is a Torx bit. It's a security screw. So, um, 
you know, it won't be a Phillips, which I think helps with security. Less, less people are likely to have that. And it beeped, so it's ready to go. Let's keep the battery out so the siren doesn't go off here. So that is the 2K camera. Let's see if I'm missing anything. It does come with the screws, obviously, to install it. It comes with drywall anchors, which is great. And other than that, you're gonna have that times four with this particular kit. All right, now I understand every home's different and I wanted to make sure that I covered some, to me, very important accessories that Lorex offers to make it fit your home better. So I mentioned the removable battery packs. Now you can charge them while the battery packs are in the camera or you can pop them out. If you don't wanna have downtime, because you, let's say you wanna just charge the battery overnight, you can buy replacement batteries. Now these are $50 because these are three cell batteries and these are the ones that are gonna give you the 24 events per day, 10 second clips for up to six months. Now that's it in the high 60 degree operating range. If it's extremely cold or it's a very dark room and it has to use the infrared illumination repeatedly, that's gonna drastically shorten your battery life. And they have actually said you can lose up to 50% of your battery life with either of those conditions. So if it's cold and dark, expect an even shorter battery life. But anyway, so it's good that you get replacements. Now what's cool about when you buy the kit separately, you get a white and black faceplate included. So I bought the white system because I think the white cameras don't stand out as much. Um, but if you got the black version of this, all the stuff I'm talking about is the same. The difference is just swap out the faceplate so it matches. So there's only one battery to worry about. Again, these are $50 each. That'll give me uh, less downtime in between. Now the other option, they sell the charging kit separately. This comes with the new 15 foot weatherproof cord. It comes with the AC adapter, a, uh, AC to USB adapter. So if you're in a position where this camera can be mounted and you can have a power cord run to it, just plug it into an outlet, then you'll never have to worry about recharging or replacing your batteries. Just use this as a, a nonstop uninterrupted power supply. So I wanted to show you that you could buy these separately. I got a couple of each because I wanted to see the best setup for my home once I've used it for a while. And to me, this is the coolest thing here. Solar kits. They're 80 bucks a pop or 150 if you buy two. So you save $10. Uh, per pair. These are weatherproof. They're IP66 rated. And the goal of this is, let's say this is a, a deeper yard. If I want a camera back here and I don't want to deal with popping the battery out or I mounted it up high, this is kind of like a one and done type deal. Now you install this surveillance system or the solar system above the camera naturally. And this is actually a metal plate, which is really, really solid. I like that. You get this nice little screw that you, uh, uh, insert the base into, so I'm going to do that now. Now there's an LED that illuminates on the back, and if you have enough power, which I do, the LED is already on. Basically this red LED on the back will tell you that it is generating enough power to keep your Lorex system charged. Now if you buy the solar kit, the camera is actually going to mount to the solar plate instead, not the plastic plate that it comes with. So all I have to do is line this back up to the, it's the same mounting design, basically the two tabs. Let me make sure I get that in on both sides. Slide that down. And you can still secure this, uh, you know, the battery pack just the same way, but basically just do that and you're good to go. It's a little bit more snug than the plastic plate, that's for sure, but it'll still work. And then obviously just angle everything accordingly to work with your setup. I love this because if you're mounting it really high or in an area you just don't want to deal with, this is going to give you uninterrupted power and it just gives you that peace of mind. So those are all the accessories. Um, I'm gonna start going ahead with picking my places for the cameras. We'll talk about the field of view. These have 140 degree field of view, so it's really, really wide, um, but we'll start finding the right points. And once I do that, I'll start installing it. I'll show you how simple that is. And then we'll move on to the app so you can see how to use everything. Now, Lorix gives you the stuff you need to do the installation in the box minus a drill. There's a few ways you're gonna modify your installation because a lot of it depends on your home and where you're putting the camera. So naturally you get the wall mount plate, you get this little yellow screwdriver which has a reversible uh, shaft and on one end is the Torx bit and on the other is the Phillips. I'm leaving it on the Torx bit because I'll be using that to secure the battery at the end. I plan on using my drill when possible. You get drywall slash stucco anchors um, and then you get the drill bit and screws. Now the drill bit, does have a mason tip on it, mason bit tip. So you can drill through stucco with this. Naturally, if you wanna use your own screws or hardware, just make sure it fits through the plate and that it sits nice and flush when it's inside because you wanna be able to uh, slide the camera on over once you're done with the installation. Other than that, it's relatively straightforward. Now, you have to decide 
where you want to mount the cameras before you start drilling. And that's a huge advantage to having a wireless uh, system because you can, uh, one, set up the recording box, the NVR, to your network, make sure your cameras are paired, and start previewing it in the app. Because once you do that, I already checked, I can position it exactly how I want my view to make sure I'm happy with the mounting location before I start drilling holes. So that's the huge convenience of going wireless. I've already done that. Now the other thing you want to consider is if you mount the camera up higher, you typically get a wider field of view, you get more range, um, and at the same time, it can make the camera out of reach of a criminal or someone who wants to damage or turn off the camera. So mounting it up high does have that security aspect, but the other thing you have to consider is that also makes it harder for you to swap the batteries. Now for me, what I like to do is, this has a Torx bit securing the battery. So I'm much more inclined to have this in a great spot, have it be viewable, so if an intruder's coming, they see the camera, get a good angle of faces if they come to the door, but because it's screwed in, it's gonna slow them down. They're not gonna be able to just instantly disarm the camera, and at that point, I've already gotten a clear shot of the culprit. So to me, I, I want the battery more accessible. It's much easier to just open the door swap batteries and go back inside and be done with it. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna pop this bracket on the wall. And once I do that, we'll slide this in and lock it. Now, if you don't have clear lines to work with when you're basing the position of your plate, I'd strongly suggest using a small level if you can. It, it just looks nicer. Because this has a ball mount, you can angle it and fix the camera however you want. You just won't be able to reposition the base of the camera in case it looks crooked. Not sure if you're OCD like that, like me, but uh, that's something I'm always keen about. Now I'm lucky here because I have a lot of lines to work with, so it's gonna be very easy to make this level. Now there's actually an extra screw I forgot to mention, and this is a Phillips screw. So I'm, I switched the screwdriver back around to Phillips. And the reason why I did that is because once you slide this camera down, there's a little screw you put in up top, and that makes it so you can't just slide it up and out of the bracket. Again, it's not bulletproof or tamper proof, but it will significantly slow down someone trying to mess with the camera, again, enough to typically deter them from doing anything to it. So let's get this on. All right, so I've secured the top screw. I'm just gonna go ahead and secure the battery by switching this and going to my Torx bit. So let's screw that in real quick. So now I know my battery's secure and no one can just rip it out. Now, even with the screw in, you can still charge this. So if I you know, run a battery pack to this, those little USB battery packs, technically you can just plug that in or if I have an AC outlet handy, I can plug it in and leave it here without having to deal with the screw. But for now, I know I'm fully charged, so I should be good for a while. Now that you've mounted everything, even though I positioned it, I could have bumped it out of the way. So what I'm gonna do is load the app again. I'm gonna make sure I'm happy with my angle, and then I'm gonna tighten down this little ring that goes around that ball joint as much as I can, and it looks perfect. So now that I've confirmed that, I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this clockwise. Now I obviously purchased a couple solar panel kits, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to integrate that into one of these cameras. It doesn't really complicate the install, you're just using the same bracket and mounting mechanism, provided you don't need to use the extension cord to give you more reach. All right, so the solar mounting system is just as easy. It uses the same shape bracket, so I'm gonna use the same method here because I'm fortunate enough that this house is a little older, so the wood's a little soft. Now, even in the shade pointed down, the red LED is illuminated, which means I have enough power to keep this camera charged pretty much indefinitely. Obviously, as long as you have daylight, it'll have enough. So I don't need direct sunlight in order for this to work correctly. Now, if you wanna benefit from the sun or a brighter area than where your camera can go because you know most of the day, let's say this isn't illuminated, Lorex actually gives you an extension cord for the solar kit. Now, there's a few things I wanna mention. So this is a weatherproof extension cord and it's quite long, so you can mount this quite a ways away, up high, wherever you want and make it reach the camera. And they give you extra screws in the solar kit so you can mount both separately. Another thing I like is let's say you bought just this camera and you're like, you know what? I don't need the solar kit, I'll swap out batteries. But five months later, you're annoyed that you're changing the batteries more frequently than you thought. Maybe it was a miscalculation or you just don't wanna deal with it anymore. So they use the exact same mounting holes for both kits, which means all you have to do is pop the camera off unscrew the plastic base plate that you were using, and then switch to the solar kit, put the same four screws in, snap this back down, and you're good to go. So I like that. It's a good flexibility thing there. I know I'm gonna want solar here because this is facing towards the street. It's gonna be busy. A lot of things will come and go, and the driveway has a lot of activity, so I want a solar kit on here. I don't wanna deal with swapping batteries more often than, I, than I'd like to. 
All right, so the solar panel's back on. Now I'm just gonna slide the camera down again the exact same way as before. This should be a piece of cake. All right, and I still have the little security screw up top, only I have a metal plate this time. Luckily, the screw they give you still works fine for either. So I'm gonna put that security screw in first. I dropped the screw into the bush and it landed on a leaf. You talk about crazy luck. All right, so I'm plugged in now. I'm just gonna use this little rubber barrel right here. This is basically gonna seal off that micro USB port around the edges. So I'm gonna put that in there. Now I have a nice snug fit. Now I'm gonna use the app again, reposition the camera, make sure that I'm happy with my viewing angle and I'll tighten down this round little uh, ring on the back to clamp everything down. And then this one's good to go. All right, so I just confirmed the viewing angle looks great on the app. I have the driveway, I have the garage doors, I have the side yard. I can even see the bush, the hedge, the privacy hedge right below this camera. So my field of view is excellent. I'm gonna go ahead and install the rear two cameras and then we'll start talking about the software and how to use everything. All right, so I missed a key detail while installing this and that is the little wire management. There's actually a way to run the cable behind the unit. So I'm gonna undo the security screw so I can fix that real quick and then I can show you what it looks like. Don't forget to check the camera angle again every time you make adjustments to it, whether it's the wire or the panel, because I had to tweak it again, but now I'm good to go. All right, so now I'm gonna do a quick all-in-one take, trying to trigger all the motion detection events. Let's see how well this works wirelessly and I'm recording, so hopefully I get no notifications. Well, let's give it a shot. I was hiding on the side of the house and now I'm in the driveway. I'm just gonna walk towards the camera zone. Nothing yet. driveway okay so that's probably my phone losing internet so that went off I go to the front door front door look at that okay so I think what happened the first time is I was pretty weak on the Wi-Fi range and I'm pretty sure it didn't pick up but it did do the motion detection event so the motion detection is working my phone just didn't respond right away so now I'm gonna go to the back of the house that worked perfectly in one shot how about that no edits needed so we're gonna keep going here. I'm, uh, I'm free holding a GoPro, so if this looks a little weird, it's the best way I could do this and still use my phone and kind of see what's going on. So I'm in the backyard now. How's the back looking? Let's see if that goes off. Kitchen door, good. We're doing good here. Now I'm on the side one. This has always been the hardest one because it's really far up and high. So I wanna see if the backyard goes off and if it doesn't, we're going to open the app and see how it looks because, oh, you know what? And I, I don't want to say I messed this up, but just to give you a backstory is I actually disabled motion detection on this one because the animals have been going off at night. <laughs> so I should have thought of that. Uh, but this is probably a good example of that working properly. So I'm going to go into the home. Um, I'm really weak on the Wi-Fi connection. So we're going to let this load for a second. Then I will show you how we can turn the motion detection back on and uh, I guess, you know, show you that it all works the way it's supposed to. All right, so all I have to do now, I'm looking at my little array of cameras and it's updating them all. Um, I can hit view at the bottom of the app here, that little grid, and switch to the four cameras. So now I have a better, um, I guess, picture of everything, which is nice on a smaller screen like this. So let me tap the backyard where I'm standing and I can see myself. So here I am, let's move on the camera. See, there's a little bit of a delay, but not bad at all. It's still working okay. Now it will stop auto uh, playing on its own. So, because it's not gonna wanna kill the battery. So I'm gonna go into settings now. And I just wanna show you motion detection settings. Right now it's set to person only. I can do it so it's all motion. So I'm gonna leave it on, I'm gonna leave it on person. And I wanna show you how to change the zone settings because this part's super easy. So this is why I didn't trigger it. I disabled, I just realized I wasn't on camera. So this is why I didn't trigger it, is where I'm standing is not in the motion detection zone I had originally. This camera was in a slightly different spot before and I moved it. So now what I'm gonna do is simply drag my thumb down a few times where I'm at. And I'm doing this one-handed. Normally you're gonna take your time and make sure this is done properly. So now I have a person, detec person detection zone set up closer to where I, I could actually trigger it. So I'm gonna hit save. Looks like it's saved okay. I'm gonna go back. Now I don't know how long this notification will uh, sleep for. So I'm gonna hit save up here in the top corner, successfully saved, so that's great. 
So again, I just did this without any edits. I just want to show you how intuitive and easy that was. I made my changes. So I'm going to walk out of this and close the app. I force closed it. I'm going to walk around. Let's walk by the, the kitchen door again. There is a cooldown setting you can do, by the way, for each camera. So once it triggers and you get a motion detection event, and I got my kitchen door alert, but once it triggers, if you have it set on a shorter timer, you'll trigger more often. If you have a longer delay, then you won't get multiple notifications in case you're walking back and forth a couple times so you don't keep dinging your phone. So let me see if the person detection works on this larger camera here, or the higher view, if you will. I think I'm in the, the person zone. So... I'm going to be kind of aggressive here. Let's walk around. Person detected home backyard. So you have to keep in mind, the camera's doing the detection. It's sending the video to the NVR. The NVR is now uploading it uh, for the internet use, and then the Wi-Fi is trying to communicate with my phone. So there is going to be a few second delay because of all that wireless stuff. However, it did work. It shows person backyard, and I can swipe down here. I'm going to click on that notification. And I am no longer live, I'm actually viewing the recording. Now I'm walking, probably not the smartest thing, but I just walked away from my Wi-Fi. And because I clicked on it, it's showing me the zone that I'm in right now. Now if I click the little bars on the top left here, notifications, I can look historically at what those events were. So let's do that now. And that little play sign. So now I can see, I have like a, a timeline, if you will, of events. And anytime there was a detection event, it'll show up on that little uh, box below. Now this one obviously doesn't get triggered often because I didn't even have the zone properly scoped. So if I go to a different camera, which I'm going to try to do one-handed here, so bear with me. So let's go to the driveway because I know the driveway um, is more action. And even when I pull the car out of the, the garage, as soon as I'm backing out, I get the detection event, which is really cool. So I'm going to go to driveway. I'm going to hit the little play button to the right of where it says driveway here. And if I scroll back, let's see something. I know I'm going to see some events here. This is in the middle of the night, so that's not going to count. Let's go back a day. And you can see the little dots on different days of the of the week. So that shows me that I did get some events. Okay. And look at that. On this one, you can actually see the car backing out, which is pretty cool. So again, that actually, <laughs> it kind of lines up with what I just said, that as soon as I back out, I got my notification event because there was motion detection. So there's a lot of really cool things about this app. It's actually very easy to use and it's very reliable. And as you could tell, I pretty much did this all in one take because I had enough confidence in the system to work. And again, this is all doing it wirelessly. And then the icing on the cake is it is a higher picture quality than I expected. Because this uses H.265 encoding, that means you get a much higher picture quality at the same bit rate. Super important on a wireless camera because your bit rate is often the, the weakness on wireless cameras. You can only send so much signal before you run into range issues or performance issues and disconnects. So the fact that it compresses it means I can still have a high picture quality like what you're seeing and um, I can still make it work on a wireless connection pretty reliably. All right, so we've gone through the unboxing. I've talked about all the features and specs. I've shown you some of the basics on how to install it and what I did at least for my setup. So I want to talk about a, f a few things now that I've had the system for a while. So this review has taken me about a month and a half uh, to do. So uh, one, thank you to Lorix for being patient. Um, but I can't talk about some of these other things without using it for a long period of time. Uh, otherwise, it'd be misleading. So uh, the system works solid. I'll get into all of the performance side soon. But I do want to talk about the importance of all the accessories and why I brought that up early in the review. Because I think it's important when you scope out you know, what the right system is for you. Now there's four basic primary accessory groups I like to think of for this kit. Um, you have your batteries, which are obviously super important on a wireless system. You can either use the four that it comes with and recharge them as they die, and it does come with the charger in the box, or you can buy replacement batteries, either just to have as a backup down the road, or if you wanna just let it run until it's basically dead or almost dead, and then switch them so you don't have any downtime. There's a few ways you can approach that. The other way to approach it is if you want a hardwired power kit. So if you don't mind seeing a power cord outside, uh, even if an intruder or an attack, um, 
we'll stick with Intruder. If someone's in your home or around your home and they want to cut the power cord to the surveillance system, all that's doing is cutting the charging cord. It's not making the camera go dead. So you still get the benefits of the security because that's not the only uh, way of it to work, which is great. The other thing to consider is solar power. You know, if you're running it outside, um, in my case, I knew I wanted solar power on a couple spots. One was for the front driveway. I didn't want to have power cords hanging down. And I also don't want to have to climb up with a ladder and constantly switch the battery out. The other one is the backyard. I wanted a high camera to cover a good chunk of the backyard um, or a patio area where all the doors are. But I also want to see the majority of the backyard and a higher vantage point was the only way to do that. So I did not want to climb up a ladder and switch batteries out. The solar kit made more sense for that. And that's what I did. The last thing to consider is uh, antenna strength. So this is one of those gray areas because you don't know what to expect until you get your system. And this will lead me to another topic, but you want to make sure that before you fully commit to an install, you climb off your ladder, et cetera, either have someone with you or once your phone is connected to the box, basically get all four cameras connected to the NVR within your home. Make sure your phone can see all four of them. Then walk out with the camera in hand to the location you want to film. Now you may have to tap the app a few times to refresh the screen because they only uh, record for so long before they go back to standby, unless there's motion, because they want to save battery life. So bring it to the location you want to mount it. You can mount it, just don't do that security screw on top, and then see if it performs the way you expect it to and if you can get a picture quality. If it doesn't connect or stay connected, you have two options. You can either, well, three options. You can reposition the camera to a different spot that's closer to the NVR to get a better signal strength. You can get an antenna extension cable or a longer high gain antenna. Lorex sells the antenna. I'll put the link in the description below if you want their high range stuff. I did find out that it seems to use the same connector. Um, that's It's a pretty common antenna connection. It's RP hyphen SMA. They make RP SMA extension cables on Amazon. They're seven to $15 uh, depending on the length. They're very inexpensive. So that's one thing to try maybe if you don't want to buy a high gain antenna, maybe you just need an extra 10 feet. I can't guarantee that'll work because mine didn't need it. Um, I went a different troubleshooting route to get the locations I want, but it's 10 bucks roughly and you have Amazon's return policy. So you can always try that. I will have a link in the description below for that too. For me, the best option to get all of my cameras where I wanted them was to move the actual NVR away from the router because it was too close to it and the router location at this home isn't ideal for camera placement. I moved the NVR to my living room or this living room, the house that I'm renting. And that made it in a very good central location and all four cameras worked after that. Now you then need to make sure the NVR has a good internet connection because it's ethernet only to join your network. So I used a Zyxel power line kit I reviewed that power line kit in the past. I think it's like 90 bucks, but it gives you an ethernet jack pretty much anywhere in the house and it never dropped. Um, I've been using it for, like I said, over a month now, the connection has been great. So that was more cost effective was for me to move the NVR system, give it ethernet, and instead of buying all kinds of extension cables or antennas and stuff like that to make all my cameras work, it made more sense just to move the box and it was a cleaner approach and I was able to connect the NVR to my TV because it has HDMI, which is kind of a cool little thing to, to flip over to it once in a while in case you want to see what's going on. Now, admittedly, I had some problems with the system when I first got it set up. I was really excited because I did my whole test. Everything was good to go. Um, I installed it and plugged in my solar panels. And shortly after, the cameras would stop working and get this loud beeping sound. Um, I reached out to Lorex support because it didn't make sense. And it turns out there needed to be a firmware update to work with these solar panels that came out with the kit. Um, and it was recommended to apply on all the cameras. So I did that. Now it was kind of a crude way of doing it. You have to use a flash drive. So you cop put the flash drive in your computer, format it to FAT32. And if you don't know how to do that, I just recommend looking up some tutorials online. Use the two download links that Lorex gave me. I'll have those in the description below as well. Flash the firmware and then you plug it into the NVR to do all your updates. Um, you know, I'm showing you some screenshots and examples right now. So once all of that was done, my cameras then worked perfectly. I had no issues with dropouts. The chirp noise or buzzing sound from losing a wireless connection went away because it wasn't losing the connection anymore. And it was a hard thing to troubleshoot because I'd set everything up and I'd plug in the camera and everything was working great. 
And then I'm like, okay, it's good to go. Plug in the surveil the solar system, tie up all the wires so it looks nice. And then later I had the problem. So it didn't quite make sense. But that solved it. So if I had to nitpick anything about this system is I wish the app had a more seamless firmware updating process instead of making you use the traditional flash drive, use the included mouse and click around and do all that. So it, it works. You can certainly fix the problem now that you know that, but I, it doesn't show me on the app that I needed any firmware updates. At least it didn't at the time of my review. So I think this is a really compelling system overall because it's actually, the price point is excellent. I was honestly blown away by the picture quality. Um, this was a wireless surveillance system that sends a signal from each camera to the box and then to your phone. There's a lot of compression and changeover happening to do all that. And because these use that H.265 encoding um, and compress the picture the way they do, I, I was really blown away. The night vision performance is excellent. I'll show you some screenshots of the night vision now so you can see what that looks like. But the range was great and that was just with like, you know, moon and ambient light. That's not even what the little LED floodlight turns on. The LED light on it is more of a deterrence. It's not so much a um, illuminate the whole area so you can see everything. It has a fairly short throw and it works for like, you know, by a door and illuminating someone's face. But I think the main benefit of that is to be a deterrent so you can, you know, scare someone off or at least let them know they're on camera. Now the app was a big improvement for me from the pre uh, previous Lorex Home app. Uh, I think the UI is better and easier to use. You also do a lot more on the app now as opposed to before you had to do a mix and match of you know, configuring things on the box, then doing it on your phone for the few last minute changes or the final tweaks. I was able to rename zones. I did my motion detection zone, set it to detect people um, versus just motion in general so you get less false alarms. So there's a lot of really cool things and that was all done in the app. So I really appreciate those upgrades. I think it doesn't quite compare as like what Google Nest or Amazon does for the Ring as far as the futuristic user interface. It doesn't seem as modern. However, with this system, you're not paying a monthly service fee, you own the hardware. And that's one of the biggest selling points is you have four cameras, no monthly service fee. If you look at the cost of a good uh, Nest camera, you know, you're already at a comparable price point, but now you don't have to pay a monthly fee. And ultimately this gives you a much better performance for both night vision and picture quality thanks to that encoding. Um, and historically, even when you pay for the Nest or Ring, they only go back so far in time. Because of the way these work and the file size and compression, my one terabyte hard drive has only used like one or two gigs of data in over a month. Um, I guess, I don't know if my motion sensing isn't crazy extreme, but I don't get false alarms and I do get motion every time someone comes to the door. I get my alerts or if someone's going in and out of the driveway. So um, it's been very good at minimizing the storage space. So I can look back six months from now and see events that happen. Whereas the other products, you're usually limited to 30 days or 14 days if you, unless you pay a premium things like that. So you kind of see where I'm going with this. I think the value is excellent. It's fairly priced and the picture quality and performance is great, especially after the firmware updates. All right, so that wraps up the review and I hope you found it helpful. Um, I want to just mention one thing, full disclosure. So this was sent to me for review. Um, I'm very thankful to Lorix for that, especially again for being patient that it took me at least a month and a half to actually do the review. Um, and they never bothered me about it once. So big thanks to that. Now on my last Lorex review, uh, I didn't work with them as closely. I just did my review. They contacted me like I think a month or two later and I got some special affiliate link. It gives me a little bit more of a kickback than what Amazon would have. Um, so it helps pay for other things on the channel. I buy a lot of the stuff I review. Um, I'm never gonna say use that link 100%, don't buy it anywhere else. Buy it wherever you're comfortable buying it. If you see it at Costco, buy it. If you want to buy it through Lorex.com, whether as a result from my video or your own research uh, or you're loyal to Lorex, um, my link will not cost you anything extra than buying it directly from Lorex. It'll either cost the same or less because occasionally I get coupon codes and I always put them in the description. So it helps support the channel, but by all means, you do you and buy it however you want if you want to get it at all. Um, with that being said, this is my last review at this home. I'm super excited to say we're um, finally doing the move in a few days. That's why everything is getting more and more bare behind me. Um, so be sure to like and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that little bell icon to be notified because the next stuff you see is going to be coming from the new place. And I can't wait to show you the new content there. So again, th big thanks to Lorex. I hope you found this helpful. With that being said, I'll see you next time.